How is everybody doing today? Today, I would like to cover what I'm calling thinking outside the mask. And by that, I mean Adobe has given us several new tools with masking that we can apply once we define a certain area of our photograph. And once we define that area, we can enhance our color and our tonality of photographs to very specific areas and apply artistic effects. So by using masking, we can be very specific in what parts of the photograph we attack and use the artistic and masking tools that we have to really make our photograph pop. So let's jump right into this picture. I'm going to show you what we can do with it with just a few masks. The first thing I want to do is I want to narrowly define an area that I want to change the color. Now you know we do have point color here at the global level that I can choose any color I want. And within that global level, I can then attack that like I picked the orange reds. But it's also affecting other colors. And of course we can use these filters down here to filter it down. But there's a much better way and a simpler way that we can do that. So let me undo that, those changes that we just did. And we're gonna start out by going to our masking tool and we're gonna grab a brush and we're gonna have our flow and density at 100% and we're gonna make sure our overlay is on and we're just going to paint those colors that we wanna affect and I wanna affect my reds and oranges. So I'm gonna apply a rough mask and it doesn't have to be precise because we are going to use point color to affect just those colors that we have outlined in our masking. All right, so I've defined these areas that I wanna change with my point color masking. I'm not gonna worry about the, the colors in the water. I'll show you how we can take care of that a little later in the video. So once I've defined my masking area, I'm gonna to go to point color, I'm gonna choose my dropper, and I'm gonna choose the color I want to affect. The first thing I usually do is I go to my luminance shift and I crank that up so I can make sure that I'm only affecting those areas that I've defined. So as you can see with my luminance turned up all the way, just those areas that I've painted in are the only areas that are being affected. Now if I see an area that's not affected that I meant to get the first time, all I have to do is come up to my mask, hit add, brush, and I want to get this area here and I'll just paint in that area and paint a little bit area there. So now I've got that the way I want. The next thing you want to do, of course, is affect the color. So I'm going to turn the luminance down. I'm going to turn the saturation up a little bit. I don't really want to affect the hue much. Maybe I might nudge it over to the red side. And as you notice, these colors are kind of bright and I'm doing that on purpose because when you look at this in YouTube, the color changes are sometimes hard to see. So while I really wouldn't make it this bright in real life, for YouTube, I'm going to make it a little brighter so you can see exactly what we're doing. So once I get my color and luminance about how I want, you also can decrease or increase your range and it'll take in more effects of the leaves surrounding that are in this color. I don't see that it's making any big changes, so I'm not gonna mess with it. You also have your amount slider here that we can then change the luminance and color all at once. So when you move your amount slider, you're changing all these values in equal amounts. All right, so we're gonna leave it about right there. The next thing we wanna do is I wanna get yellows. Now before we do that, let's hit our mask, double click here and type in reds because this is going to be real important coming, uh, going on uh, to know exactly what mask is what color. So I'm going to create a new mask, a brush, I'm going to use the same settings, and we're just going to hit these yellow areas. That's all I'm concerned about right now is the yellows. We have a little bit in here. This is kind of a marginal area here, and maybe a little bit in here. All right, so now that we have that defined, let's get a little bit here. Let's go and choose the color we want to affect. We want to affect this yellow. And let's hit the luminance. We can see that this is the areas I want to affect. I'm not going to really touch these, although there seem to be a little yellow in them, but we'll do that when we affect our greens. So I'm going to turn the luminance back down a little bit. I'm going to turn up my saturation. Get the yellows about where I want them. All right, so now we have, let's double click here and say yellows. All right, so next thing we want to do is look at our greens. So we want to have our mask uh, brush again, and this will be a little busier. We're going to just paint in the green areas that we want to affect. 
All right. If there's some areas of the green that you might want to break up, we can do that. But for simplicity's sake right now, I'm just going to hit all the greens at once. And I'll show you how we can kind of mitigate that with another artistic effect. All right, so we have all our green selected. And it doesn't matter if we go into the sky because remember, we're going to use point color, which only affects the areas that we have masked. All right, now that we have our greens masked, I'm going to pick a green color about like, let's look at a little dark one, maybe like this. And I'm going to turn on my luminance. You can see these are all the areas that we're going to hit. All right, so I'm going to keep it about like this. I'm going to shift the saturation just a little bit. Maybe make it a little greener. Take some of that yellow out. Bump it up a little bit. I'm, not, I'm purposely going to bump it up a little high because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. So now that we have our greens in place, there's some areas, especially where the yellows come in, that I think it's just a little too harsh. Now, I, I, I could go into another, maybe uh, a color area here and tone down my greens but let me show you artistically how we could take care of this so i'm going to double click here on mask i'm going to call this my greens click ok now when we're on the greens we're going to click on these three dots and we're going to intersect with the brush and by doing that whatever area we brush over is where the effect will be applied remember when we're using our intersect and masks we're saying only the areas that I brush on, because I chose my brush as my intersect, only those areas that I brush do I want to see the effect applied. And to help that out, we're going to have the flow at about 50%, and we're going to have a narrow feather and a small brush, and we're just going to paint in those areas we want it to be affected. And because we have a 50% flow, it means every time I brush across, I only get 50% of the effect. Now, as soon as I touch this picture with my brush, it's going to take the whole effect away on the greens, because that's where we are, and we're going to apply it back with a brush. So I'm going to click right here. You can see all the effect of greens is gone, and now I'm just going to lightly brush over the areas where I want this effect to be applied. So I only put one brush there, and as you can see, that effect isn't as bright as it was originally. And now I'm just going to brush over these other areas that I want the effect applied. And I want them applied more heavily. So I'm going to have to brush several times across the area to bring out the effect. Now I don't want the effect as heavy on this side, on these trees. I like the little yellow in it, but I, I don't want the full effect. So I only hit it with one brush stroke. And now I'm just going through the other areas of the green where I want the effect applied. Brushing heavier where I want the effect to be deeper, and brushing lightly where I don't want it to be affected as much. So any of the areas that have kind of a yellow tint to it, I don't want those affected as much as the more solid green areas. So if I go up here and we look at this brush that we're doing at Intersect and I turn it off, oop, turn it off, and on, off, and on. It's a very subtle effect, but it's the effect that I want for some of the greens and uh, the evergreens and then some of the greens over here that are mixed with yellow. I don't want them to be quite as bright. Now if we look at our before and after, before and after, now we get the full effect just by using three masks in here. Now I told you we do something with these uh, water colors and we're doing that by just doing an add brushing. So we're looking at our reds. I want to click here on the reds and I want to add and I want to add by brush and again I want to have like a 50% flow because I don't want to hit this as hard as it is here because it's a reflection so I don't need it to be as bright so I've reduced my flow to 50% and uh, uh, with my add brush I'm now just going to brush in these areas and as you can see it's just slowly brightening them up I don't want to go overboard and it's just the reds because that's where I wanted to add the color. So if I wanted to add some of the yellows, I'd come to yellows, I would go to add with a brush, and now I can hit the yellows here and brighten them up a little bit. So that's how we bring out the reflection in our uh, photograph in the water, just by doing an add subtly from what we originally put in.
Now let me show you one other artistic effect I like to put into my photographs. Not all of them, but when I have bright colors and bright light, I like to add a little contrast and a little ethereal effect to give a glow to the trees. Now, it's hard to do that. Um, uh, I don't want to do it individually because the effect right here in clarity is just one color at a time. What I want to do is affect the whole picture at one time. I can't use it at a global level because it would affect the water, it would affect the sky, it would affect everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another mask, I'm going to grab the linear gradient, and I'm going to apply the linear gradient to the entire photograph. So my cursor is down here, I'm going to hold my shift key down and drag, and that makes a, a straight horizontal or vertical line across the whole photograph, and you can see the whole photograph is now covered in a mask. What I want to do now is go to my clarity and I want to crank that down so I get an ethereal effect and it's across the whole photograph, but that's okay. We'll get to that, we'll clean that up later. So I picked the level of what I think is a good glowing ethereal effect using clarity. I might add a little texture to bring some of the texture back to the leaves. I don't want them to get totally blurry, so we're about right there. But the only place I want to place the effect is in the tree line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to intersect with a brush. I'm going to keep my flow a little higher, maybe about 70%. And remember, the effect will only be applied to the area that I brush. So as soon as I touch the picture, the effect is taken away. And now it's up to me to put it where I want the effect to be applied. So what I'm going to do is just paint in across the, the tree line right here and apply that effect to the tree line. All right, you can turn the overlay on so you can make sure you're just hitting the areas that you want. Now once you have this in effect, let me turn the overlay off, you can always increase and decrease the effect to what you need. So I'm just gonna play with it a little bit. I might add a little contrast this and I think the texture is about right and then we have our amount slider which we can control the amount to right there that's a little too much contrast might add a little shadow all right so now if we look at this mask here's before here's after here's before here's after it still might be a little strong I just want it to be able to slight glow so as you can see, we've applied that effect to the whole tree line. I don't want it in the water because I want a clean reflection from the trees in the water. And it didn't get applied to the sky. All right. Next thing I want to do is I want to affect my sky. I want it to be a little bluer. And to do that, I'm going to use curves. I'm not going to use HSL or any other kind of color because we have different shades of blue in the sky. And if I use my point color, it, it'll look blotchy. And HSL is going to be too big of a hammer to hit with it. So what I want to do is come up here and I want to grab my sky mask, get a complete mask of the sky, and from there I want to go to curves. And in curves, I want to go to my blue color here. And all I want to do, I'm going to grab right in the center and I'm going to move my curve up to the blue area. And as you can see as I do that, I get a nice blend of blue in the sky, exactly what I was looking for. You can also go to your luminance and you can also bring up the clouds a little bit or bring down the cloud color a little bit. It will put a little S curve in there and make the clouds look a little better. All right, so that is using a sky mask and enhancing it with your curves, another good tool. And actually you could use that tool in here. So let's say, let's look at our greens. We have our greens here. We can uh, use our green color here to enhance our greens like this, or we could use the luminance slider and we'll make an S curve, put three dots on our curve line here. Let's bring down the shadows a little bit. We'll bring up the midtones and maybe bring down the highlights a little bit. So even with these curves, you can see we've made a slight change to the trees that kind of looks a little better than it did before. So this is available to you, each one of your masks too. Now the last thing I want to show you is something I do to a lot of my photographs, and that's a vignette. 
But in this photograph, it's kind of special because to me, this is the, the subject of the picture right here, this V shape of this nice orange, yellow, and gold color. So I kind of want to highlight, I want to bring that in to uh, view for my, for my viewers. So I want to put, in, put a vignette in. I'm going to very, be very specific with it. Again, I'm going to use masking. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here. First, I want to shrink down my picture so I can see the whole picture very small. And I'm going to select a radial gradient. And I'm going to put a very large radial gradient across the whole photograph. And I want my dot, I want my center to be about in the center of where my subject is. And then I'm going to click invert. Now, as you can see, the mask uh, overlay is on and it's hitting a lot of these areas harder than it is the center. And that's the way I want it. If you want to make the mask a little bigger or smaller, you can just grab and expand it out. Now, once I get the mask in place, I blow up so I can see the whole thing. I turn the overlay on and then I look at my tone and I bring in the vignette the way I want it. But I'm not through. I know it looks kind of crazy. I'm just getting the vignette pretty much like I, the darkness that I want. From here, I'm going to go to Intersect, again with the brush, and I'm going to put my flow at about 50%, and of course, as soon as I touch the photograph, the whole effect is going to go away, and now I'm going to paint in where I want my vignette to be. And usually I need a pretty big brush for that, so I'm going to click here. The effect goes away, and now I'm just going to start making my vignette. Doesn't take a lot. I'm just circling around the area where I want my vignette to be. Now, once you have the vignette in place, of course, like I said before, you have your amount slider that you can increase the vignette, and then pr to protect your highlights and your shadows, because you don't want them all blocked up with the vignette, all you have to do is take your highlight slider and bring that up a little bit, Take your shadow slider, bring that up a little bit, and now look at our vignette. Very subtle, but it really brings us into the photograph here. So, as you saw, we can use multiple masks, and we have, looks like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six masks that we can specifically attack certain colors, certain tonal ranges, and certain areas of the photograph. And then by using either intersecting masks or point color or our curves, we can specifically shape that color and that tone to make the picture just pop off the page and show us what it really, really looked like the first time we saw it. So now let's look at our picture here. Let's turn our masks off. This was before, after, before, after. I hope this helps everybody out so you can see the power that we have in our mask. Think outside the mask, think outside the box. Combine your masks, your masking tools, intersect, point color, curves, HSL. Put them all into play on a single mask, and you'll be amazed at what you can do with your photography. I'll talk to you all soon. I hope you all have a very good holiday. I'll talk to you later.